think there has to be a balance in this world. And so I feel like yeah. with what you're doing on TikTok, with, with what I'm doing, like it kind of neutrals itself out. That's know, what I'm saying. It out. That's why we get along so well. Yeah, yeah. We, we need each other in a yeah, way. Yeah, we do. Um, Dom and sub. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the comment section show starring me, your fave. You already know me. Who cares? Everyone's excited to see the guests today. I'm so excited to introduce you all to my favorite person of all time. You already know who she is. Miss Dylan Mulvaney. Oh, hi. Ah. You know, you're one of my most requested guests. Are you serious? I'm dead ass. Oh my God. Drew. So many people were like, you have to get Dylan on the show. I was like, girl, she's already on the sketch. Also, Come on. you know, I just realized we're two girls with boy names. I just realized that too. Do you ever get like Love. hate for having a boy name? Oh yeah, all the time. What the hell? That's they're like, I, that's a boy's name. Well, speaking of comment section, that is my top. <laughs> every comment, it's like, okay, we get that you're not changing your name, but if you were gonna, what oh, would it be? Yeah. And I was like, babe, I don't want to. No, I love our names. Mine's Drew Buffalo, but it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> It's We're a little D, different baby. vibes. Yeah, it's, it's a little different. But I get, yeah, I mean, the whole, it's that's a boy name. I feel like that's real dated. I know. Or well, they say the first thing they'll tell me is, is that your real name? And then I go, like, no, I it's, picked, a, yeah, it's got, a stage I'm, name. It's like, an share. alias. <laughs> I'm in the witness protection program. Yeah, literally. Oh or God. they'll ask me, is that short for something? Andrew? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Hello? No, literally, I tell him, I'm like, nope. I love Drew. It's very it's gender. I feel like we're like headed towards like gender fluid names. Absolutely, as they should be. Amen. I don't know why oh names God. should be gendered Such in the first place. Such a progressive podcast. That's what I'm saying. My mom actually named me Drew because she said when she was pregnant with me, she saw like a study where it said like, um, if they have like two resumes side by side and they have the exact same qualifications, they're more likely to pick the man. So and my so mom gave with me the a name. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's gave, so fierce. if it's like if it's like a Jenny and like a Bill, they're mm, more likely they to pick, pick Bill, Bill. Mm -hmm. every time. Misogyny. Damn, it's in everything. <laughs> <laughs> you and I would know that better than anybody. I would say so. Your rise to fame has been Whew. meteoric. Um, Love it. I am still recovering from Pride Month, <laughs> and we're two months out. Yeah. Uh, I think we we were just talking in the green room about mm -hmm. like how uh, daunting this all is. And yeah. it's like, how, how can I keep up with this all? No, truly. And it's also something we never set out to do in the first place. You know what I'll say about you though, yeah. is that, well, first of all, you, when you followed back, there's something about when your, fav like your favorite creators like follow you Stop, back where you're I like, <gasps> <laughs> and it almost feels better than if a celebrity follows you because you're like, oh my God, this is a real person that I love, like that yeah. also loves me. Yeah. And, but when I first met you, I, I was like kind of, because you are like, kind, I don't want to say intimidating mm -hmm. online, but you're very strong. Yeah. And I think I met you towards the beginning of my transition. Yeah. And I was just like enamored by you and Stop. how you could you're stand so up to people because I, le I lean towards submissive mm. and you're like, babe, let's dominate this yeah. bitch. Oh my God, I said bitch. You can uh, cuss as long as you, oh, as much as you want. We just um, avoid the F word here. So, <laughs> but when I first met you, I thought the coolest part about you was how willing you were to like talk about like little industry secrets with me or making yeah. sure that I was being paid fairly or yeah. like, and that's what I love about, oh, so I think sweet. that's the good part of what we're doing is like yeah. protecting each other, Absolutely. especially women mm -hmm. with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. to have each other's backs on all fronts. Absolutely. I was like, I remember when we met for the first time, it was at um, Milk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time we ever met in person. So you're like one of the few people, most of my guests that come on, um, coming here is the first time I ever meet them. Oh, serious? Yeah, most of them. I, I've only ever had one before who I met prior. So you're my second one. But I'm I telling you, when I met you, it's the exact same as your con. Like, it, yeah. I feel like we're both very similar That's to my, our presence. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's my favorite compliment to get. And you're such a light. I met somebody else. Oh, I'll tell you her name later because okay. it's tea. But she literally told me that she loves you so much. And she said she was nervous to come up to me. I met her at a premiere. She's an actress. Okay. But she told me she was nervous to come up to me initially but she said she had just hung out with you and she said and dylan told me you were so sweet and that's why i was like you know what i'm gonna go for the something. record drew is like very nice person <laughs> yeah if you're watching this just not if you're a terrible man um <laughs> that's it that's the that's the only if you're a terrible man we're nervous for you i'm anything but nice and i i need you to teach me how to kind of stand up to yeah people. i'm gonna give dylan some tips <laughs> i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a well, little it's like funny list. because this this episode's called spreading love right yes absolutely and we're yeah i came that. on i was like i woke up this morning i was like i'm ready to 
Oh, excuse me. I'm ready to really just lay into people. Like I'm like, oh, let's rip them to shreds. I'm more than willing to have to host that for you. Oh, that's a, that's our that episode too. Absolutely. Um, We're gonna talk about spreading love. I specifically chose this for you because <laughs> Dylan spreads lots of love. She is just as bubbly and amazing in person as she is online, Stop which it. is a great thing. Um, I, however. I'm accused of doing the opposite quite often. <laughs> but um, hey, it's, it's gotten you here. But see, we join forces. Right. And that's why I say all the time, I am so nice as long as you're nice. If right. If you keep it nice, right, and tight around me, you don't need to worry. Nothing and, to worry about. And I think when I do let loose, that, that's because somebody's really crossed no, me. No, truly. But I think there has to be a balance in this world. And so I feel like yeah. with what you're doing on TikTok, with, with what I'm doing, like it kind of neutrals itself out. That's you know, what I'm neutrals saying. It out. That's why we get along so well. Yeah. yeah. We, we need each other in a yeah, way. Yeah, we do. Um, Dom and sub. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... I notice, like, because I'm so positive, yeah. I sometimes feel like people are looking for reasons to hate me even more. Yeah, that's fair. And because it's really easy to, like, I feel like to blow up on TikTok mm -hmm. when, um, you know, you can, like, lay into people or, like, with what you're doing, like, I see it as actual good. Like, I feel like yeah. what you're doing is very positive and, like, creating change in a positive way. Love. But some people go in, you know, on there and just like rip people to shreds for no reason yeah. or like women tearing other women down yeah or like, do you ever have you ever made videos about like women specifically no i haven't i made i think i made one video a long time ago about her but i didn't talk about her the same way i talked about um i didn't talk about her the same way i talked about men i just was talking about what she was talking about but she was being she was an anti-vaxxer and she was also talking shit on pronouns. So oh. it was like one of those gross things. It was a it was double, yeah, double-edged sword. Yeah, a real conservative <sighs> ally kind of girl, whatever. She's not an ally, but just a conservative person. But I have said multiple times on multiple occasions that I'm never going to drag women the same way I drag men. Mm. Um, and I've said that because... Word. Uh, men do that enough for all of us. Oh, babe, uh, they, they, they got they that covered. Enough. Yeah, but I will say there are women out there that are trying to take us down. There are. Yeah, and I have many of them. It feels like now that I am, you know, I'm still new to like girlhood to womanhood. Yeah, I, there does feel like this scarcity complex of yeah. like there's not enough to go around, and then turfs don't get me started. <laughs> but <laughs> I think what's Literally. crazy about like women know what to say to like yeah. to your buttons. They know, that's well, you true. know how to find a man's buttons. Truly. And that's, period. and that's why I've said too, the only hate that ever really bothers me is when it comes from people that I feel so driven to protect. Mm. Those are, that's the only time that hate really rubs me the wrong way. Um, other than like the casual death threat, <laughs> other <Yeah>. than that, <laughs> um, it's more so when it's coming from inside the house, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like it's, it's women or anyone else in a marginalized group. I will say it's far less than men. I, I I'm operating at like 98 too, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But that too is pretty strong and they, they do say some of the most vile things. Right. And, um, and I sometimes. think because I so badly want to be accepted by women, like as mm. part of the community, yeah, it hurts extra bad. Yeah. And actually like that was on day two of girlhood, like some women had already been offended. And I was like, Oh my God, I already screwed up on the second day. <laughs> and, and so like to come this far and now have like the majority of my followers are women yeah. or trans people. And that feels really nice to like yeah. have that kind of support. Absolutely. That's the, that's kind of the thing too, is like even, as the kind of creator that I am now, yeah. even when I have women say really terrible shit about me, like they'll say some really like racist shit mm -hmm. about me sometimes. And like, even then I like still prioritize them. close to the chest. Yeah, I still prioritize women. I still prioritize being you being marginalized. I still prioritize yeah, because you. The second you start using your platform to like tear other women down, it just gives all those Men, men that validation. You, yeah, it mm -hmm. it, may, it gives them like confirmation. And I always think we're on the same side. Yeah, I'm fighting for you, girl. Thanks. Like what? It, what? Yeah, the and then that's I'm my. Making. That's what same I'm saying. You, like, yeah. Sorry, like if don't you want another girl in the mix so that yeah. I can like be fighting for your rights as well? Babe? Yeah, literally, we're, like, we're strengthening power the in numbers. <laughs> yeah. We can need all the help we can get. It's truly. At this point. Because apparently we're not strong enough. Apparently, according to all the men. All the men. That we're so emotional. Um, <laughs> Which my then, page would beg okay, to differ. Okay, question for you too. Like, when you read hate, does mm -hmm. that affect you less than when you, like, watch somebody actually making a video about you? Um, I guess it depends. It depends really because, I mean, typically when men make hateful videos about me, it's never clever. 
mm. which is I'm sure how mm. your hate is too. It's never nuanced. The women it's can never... be clever about yeah. it. Um, men the men can't. are like, you'll never be a woman, bro. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, that, it's, on, it's not creative. I'm like, ba- babe, didn't didn't hit home. But you know who does know how to, to take <laughs> me down a notch is when another trans woman, you know, speaks oh, on yeah. my experience because then I'm like, oh, it's it, yeah. the call is coming from inside the house. No, truly. And that's and that's another thing, too. That's like a huge internalized issue. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I always say too, like for women. I'm not going to drag you the same way I drag men, but I'm also not going to help you. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not doing anything for you like that. You're on your own at that point. Like (laughs) the internalized misogyny, babe, work it out. And I tell people all the time, life is too short to waste it. Trying to defend men who don't even see you as a human. They don't see you as an equal. They don't see you as anything except a servant and like a whole for them. That's all they care about. And I have men like that have literally been like, how, why would you give up your privilege of being a man to like do this? And I'm like, Babe, because I had no choice. This is who I am. The way they run into the point and completely miss it. it, it, Truthfully. And then if I tell them you're speaking from a point of privilege, they're like, who has more privileges? Women have more privileges Uh, than men. um, Women have more privileges. Right. And then, but when it comes, (laughs) like when the hate comes specifically like from a trans woman to me, I just have to like kind of get to the point of like, why like why is she speaking on this? And I really do listen because I think it's important. Same. Same. But this one girl's video started with um, Dylan Mulvaney's personality is like nails on a chalkboard. Well, that's and just I was opinion. like, I should have stopped the video right there because I knew I was like, <laughs> oh, we already, you know, she wasn't going to like whatever I was just going to yeah, say pe- yeah. like, either way. It's just, um, it's just like at that point, it's just opinion. Yeah. And then we were talking anything. about right before this, we were talking about like conspiracy theories about us. Oh, yeah. And There's one of I many. Mean, well, yeah. One of mine going around right now is that like I'm a government plant that was put here right before Pride Month. <laughs> To like take down families and the way the that they the way that they give us way too much credit. Well, yes, but also <laughs> I'm like, like I'm the first one to believe anything. <laughs> and well, first of all, you do so much sarcasm. Like I, the Chris Olsen episode is all sarcasm, yeah. and it goes right over my head. So, <laughs> but like when I was watching this video about myself, that was like. It literally about made maybe, up lies yes yes yeah. made up lies i'm like oh my god maybe they're right like i was like is I, that because, me well i'm the i'm the first one to join a cult so like yeah. if somebody's jumping off a pl- cliff i'm going with them <laughs> and and so i'm like wow i'm you know i'm in the illuminati and i didn't even know it you're like wow thank you so much for letting me know i know i'm so but, glad okay, you tuned if me i in. ever you know blink twice in a video i have joined the illuminati and i just can't say anything <laughs> there you go like the conspiracies that's why i'm saying it's the ultimate like most extensive form of the illusion at yeah. some point oh where they convince themselves Ooh, i have a question for you oh my god please ask me so i notice when i'm really positive like i, I try to be really positive online yeah. and then when i don't some people go oh what's yeah. happening and yeah. so do you ever find when you like because you like you know lay into these men in yeah. your videos and then when you kind of take it in a really positive tone do some people like get thrown by that yeah sometimes they'll tell me you know, oh, I feel like you went too easy. Um, or they'll say like, damn, are you changing up or something like that? But listen, we all have to adapt. Yeah. When it comes to guidelines, I'm pivoting, girl. Mm-hmm. Every time they change them, I got to pivot. So, but also at the we're same time. We're business women. Yeah, we are business women. Also, you have to keep in mind too, I've been making videos every single day for almost two years. So I at some point oh I God, get bored. I gotta change it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I started telling guys things like this one guy. <laughs> oh my God! Some of these dudes they got so mad at me on Twitter. Twitter's the we talked oh, about that babe. too. That's no, no, like no. one of the most rancid places to be. But some dudes, what's because our little armies are on there patrolling. Yeah, it's like not they nearly are. as bolstered nope. as it is on my other platforms. But someone wrote he called me like a fat bitch. It was something very unbecoming, <laughs> but also very unoriginal. Right. He wrote that to me and I just wrote back, hey, your profile picture is so cool. And I just put, so boss, man. You look amazing. You look so sick in that pic. And, and he just blocked me. Didn't even. That was probably the most offensive thing you could <laughs> ever say to him. I had him. another guy write some terrible shit to me and I wrote back to him, aspiring actor, huh? Because that's what he wrote in his bio. I go, hey, I hope you make it. He's like, babe, <laughs> let me call my agents and I'll get you a meeting. Hey, you know what? I'm wishing you the best. You, you need some. You need help memorizing and those lines. And that's like so much funnier to me because yeah. they they get so much more upset when right. you talk like that Right, but then some of them. your fans might read it like 
out of context and be like, whoa, <laughs> she, she really just changed up her brain They there. always know. They, they know. Always they know, know what's going on. I have nothing the but the page. worst intentions with them. And they write and they write the most terrible shit to me. And then I'll say something so silly. Like, this is a real common one I've been getting lately. They'll ask me, do you have, on TikTok, they'll say, do you have any bulking tips, right? <laughs> and that's a fat joke for those of you that don't get it. They're trying to ask me how to put on weight. Shit. So if you think about it, you're kind of dragging yourself because you're saying that I'm bigger and stronger than you. So that's that's a read. You're like, babe, I have more muscle. But the but the brain doesn't go that far. But then <laughs> this one guy asked me that for like the 27th time in like an hour. The same person? No, oh. different person. Oh. Yeah, I just get that comment frequently. And, and you then were I, lucky number 27. Yeah, I literally wrote back, um, yeah, I have, I have a great tip. Have you ever tried taking munchma? Do you know what munchma? No, what is munchma? <laughs> I just go munch my balls. <laughs> but I wrote, have you ever tried munchma? And then he said, what's munchma? And I said, munch my balls. But babe, you use their humor against them. And then he wrote, he literally wrote back, what are you, seven? You asked You're me like, if I'm I, speaking your language. Yeah, they're like, hey, you big fat fatty. Tell me how you got fat. And then I was like, You're munch like, on my okay, balls. Okay, yeah, let's have a laugh That's how together. You get fat. And then they're like, You're literally a child. You started it. <laughs> <laughs> are, if we're pointing fingers here, I thought you wanted to know. If someone the principal's else, running up, I'm yeah. saying you you started it. Someone else asked me, "What are you seven or whatever?" Or like, "Is that's not for real?" Like they get so angry, and then I go, "Well, if you don't like that, you could also try Sagundis. Have you have you tried those? What's Sagundis? Sagundis? I'm nervous to ask. Sagundis nuts. <laughs> <laughs> They hate those jokes. Oh. They hate them. They get so upset. But that's why I was like, you asked. I thought you wanted a bulking tip. That's my tip. Okay, well, I need some of those for like when, when they come for me. Oh, they're so easy. Those okay. are real easy. We'll get into that for sure. But obviously, as we sw said already, <laughs> we're, we're trying to spread We're talking love. about spreading love or these nuts, whichever comes first. So here on the comment section, we always bring videos that I was tagged in and we bring them here and we laugh and we giggle and we tell people to take munchma if they need. I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, so this first video, I just give a little summaries of them. This is a motivational life coach talking to the camera saying, have you ever heard of the saying, kill people with kindness? Sometimes people are toxic and don't deserve your kindness. Try killing people with silence, right? Ooh. Which is fair. I think that's fair. I, I love that. As someone who tends to over speak a lot, <laughs> I, I wish that was a, ta I probably need to try that tactic. Mm. Um, but Oh my God, if so if somebody doesn't text me back for like, you know, a few hours, sometimes I'm like, oh my, I gotta go send flowers. Like, <laughs> and I feel that too. What's your sign again? I'm a Capricorn. Oh, yeah. I've done a lot of Capricorn slander, Dylan. Oh, I've slandered Capricorns up and down the but streets. We're productive, and that's. And you know what? <laughs> this is what I'll say. We're about, setting the record this straight. This is what I say about Capricorns. I well, my hair and makeup artist is a Capricorn too. Oh, well, so and he knows. And you've got these little pearls in your and look how beautiful I look. Oh, are so those clearly. little crimping, the crimping ones. Yeah, that, oh, so aren't they good. so cute? I gotta get me. So one. for Capricorns, they are so charming, very charming, very mm, lovable. People okay. get close to them very quickly. I'll take it. Which I think is a great thing. Yep. However, when they're sure. done with you, they act like you're dead, and they've never met you in their entire life. And I think that's a super villain power. That mm. you guys sometimes use. You know, I will, looking back, I will say <laughs> that I have cut some ties and it feels good. I le left them in the dust. You know, and some they, of those high the school way friends. That, the way that you just <gasps> like. Oh, I got a good comment to bring up. Oh my God, please tell me. Okay, this reminds me of this um, This time I was watching this hate, hate video about me. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. in the comments was this person um, that, and okay, when I go through hate video comments, yeah. I kind of like to take in some criticism. Got it. And I like to see how I can people please. Mm -hmm. And this this one name like looked really familiar to me and it said, Dylan only does things for likes and will never address this. And I was like, what is this name? So I click oh, I on it that comment. and it was someone from high school. Tea. And I click on their profile. On the, I was like, I go to their, go to their Instagram. Yeah. They had DM'd me like two months before. I don't get to read all my DMs, yeah. so I hadn't seen this. Yeah. And so I DM'd, the, and it was just like, hey, would love to get together, do some content with you. Tea. And I, so I, I then DM'd them back and was like, hi, I just saw that you left this kind of rude comment about me on, on TikTok. I just wanted to see what's up and what I've done Look to you. offend you. And they responded and they were like, 
oh, it was because you hadn't responded to my DM, you know, prior. So I just assumed that you were a, a now a horrible person. Uh, and I was like, babe, that's and that's and where, immediately. And, and that is the Capricorn in me where I'm like, that's where we leave you in the dust. Exactly. Well, the fact that they're and they were they immediately the like, anyways, girl, oh, do you want to make content? Flip, flip the script. <laughs> they were like, oh, my God, like, this is so great to hear from you. <laughs> How have you been? Right. Because I'm reading, you know, I'm reading those comments. I don't think they expected me to see that. No, absolutely not. A lot of times they don't. Um, especially, but that was very telling. Like, they, I'm yeah. glad that I ended up having that moment because otherwise yeah, I would have been like, what did I, I would, you know, be losing sleep over it. No, literally. And it's just it gives you confirmation, too, that sometimes people just say things just mm -hmm. because I can't even tell you the amount of things that have been said about me on TikTok that are like just outright lies mm -hmm. about me. And then people are like, I also heard this. Did you? Oh yeah, yeah. Well From they who? because they're looking for, for yeah. reasons. And sometimes I've asked people like, where did you see that? Send it to me. Yeah. And then they were like, well, if I'm being honest, I just heard somebody say it once in a comment section. Mm. And you just believe it like blindly. You're just like, that's okay. Well, that's what I believe. And the only reason that happens is when you're already looking for a reason right. to like hate someone valid. Well, and speaking on like the silence as well of like, a lot of these hate videos about us get made because they want us to interact with them. I, yeah. I was just listening to you talk about how um, you can tell when somebody is like making a video to provoke you. Yeah, absolutely. And so not giving them that platform yeah. and, and not, you know, pushing that sort of because that's what they want yeah sometimes i'll put them on another platform and they hate that even more mm. <laughs> hey, hey, like, let's take it. you over here yeah because i'm still making the content that i need to f to bolster my audience and then you don't get what you want which is getting a stitch from me on tiktok but i always think that never works out the way you think it's going to mm -mm. for me especially if i stitch you on tiktok all I do is flip your algorithm upside down because then your comments outweigh your likes and then yep. your content gets suppressed. So me stitching you does not result in you going viral. It's not viral. a good thing for you, babe. Well, and also, what do you think is going to come out of that? You think you're going to get brand deals off being a terrible <laughs> person? You know what I mean? They're like, get that this guy man's in my gonna office. This going to be selling lipstick. <laughs> yeah, they're like, get that guy in my office. I think I want him to promo Ooh. my new Starface 100% hydrocolloid pimple patch. <laughs> <laughs> that was good girl they are not hiring you okay mm -mm. like when you're a terrible person online no one's gonna hire you to do no, anything and that like is that. what i will say about i think spreading joy online mm -hmm. and why that has worked in my favor is yeah. because now you know brands and and people do want to work with me because they know when like I, you know they come into a space or a meeting with me or gonna have me on the show like they know that i'm probably gonna be a nice person yeah absolutely. and because sometimes i think when a platform is all because, I mean, some people on TikTok, they really, they're going wild with these stories. Yeah. And it feels good to be doing the opposite. At yeah, times. I agree. I agree. And it's validating to us because at the end of the day, on a semi-serious note, we're both good people. We really are. Ding. And we both we both have a greater purpose outside of just social media. Yeah, I can't wait you know? to see what you do for yeah. like a whole lot. We got a lot. Okay, that is the exhausting part of like, of keeping this going the yeah. I was like because I I think of Ellen a lot of the times like I would mm -hmm. love to have a talk show one day I would mm -hmm. love to you know do how she's kind of brought gay and lesbians onto the scene mm -hmm. in the mainstream I would love to do that for trans people yeah and I was like oh my god isn't she in her 60s like you're telling me I have to do this for another 40 years <laughs> um oh side note I'm 25 okay and T. Do you ever, like, I kind of felt like on the older side of TikTok, at, at some yeah, point, same. like, we've been accepted by Gen Z, which yeah. is so great. Yeah. Um, we're, like, on that cusp. Yeah. Um, but there's also this energy of of just, like, keeping this going for so long. Yeah, there is. It's 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 the nature of social media, I think. It evolves as we grow. But I think that's the key to us sustaining careers mm. is that we build it outside of social media. Yes. So at this point, I think you and I are in a position where luckily we have fan bases that are so strong and so wonderful yeah. that they'll be willing to follow us into other forms of media, whatever that may be, which Absolutely. is a wonderful thing. I think that's a blessing. So. And, and I, I like that, you know, we didn't go viral at like 15 so that oh we had God, like me a moment to like have real jobs and, same, same. and do all those things. I um, said that all the time. It is weird though. Cause like I get comments that are like, uh, or people will be like, Oh, you're in your thirties or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> um, what's going on yeah um, same but I also get infantilized a lot and I was wondering for you because I think what happens with trans women is 
we're either infantilized or we're overly sexualized. Yeah, like fetishized. With you, do you think like, are your comments really like protect this woman at all costs or yeah. are they more like, Ooh, babe, you look so hot right now. I never get those. <laughs> Neither of those. Uh, no, I talked oh, to one of my you're guests. You're in a good, you're in yeah. the middle then. Yeah. I get more of you're a fat bitch. I hope you die, but that's a little oh, different. Yeah, that's, <laughs> the vibes um, are a little different, but I do sometimes get men who, what about from your fans? From my fans, no. the hyping you up. They they hype me up all the time. They don't see you as a child. No, either. they've never. No, but they are shocked to find out how old I am. Sometimes, sometimes they think I'm like I don't know why, but sometimes people think I'm like 19, 18. Ooh, babe, I'm like with girl, a lot that, of life experience. That's and a I'm lot saying. of confidence. Talking for like a grown olds. man. But hey, we'll take we'll take the we'll take the the skin. We'll take the compliment. That's what I and I've said that when they meet me in real life, they realize how like large and in charge i am mm -hmm. like i'm a tall girl i'm a thick girl so like i've told people this like i've told people i'm six feet tall so like sometimes people ask me and my man is six four so like when they meet us both in person they're like you guys aren't like big people <laughs> which is um i think but sometimes hey, models are tall and that's hot and that's me yeah <laughs> But that's like another thing too. I, I think um, sometimes though I'll have men who do sexualize me mm -hmm. um, in the same way that they typically sexualize minority women. So it's out of hate. La as yeah, well. it's like it's like a hate thing, mm -hmm. but it's like a hate fetish thing. Like they'll say things like. Uh, I mean, like they all just have just, crushes on. Like yeah, all those men that are crush. making videos about you, they just have big crushes on you. <laughs> and it's like they'll say things like. Um, they'll say the grossest thing ever. Like one dude made a video about me and he was talking about like, can you imagine what, what that laugh sounds like in bed or something like that? Like, I You'd don't be think so I could lucky ever. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm like, well, the ee. beauty of that is you'll never have to worry about that bitch. Will you? And second of all, get me out of your dreams. I don't even want to be in the brain. Mm -mm. Throw me in the trash. That just confirmed that they're thinking about you while Rip laying in bed. Rip it right out of that brainstem. I don't want to mm -mm. be in the imaginary field either. <laughs> Sometimes they'll be like, I mean, I wouldn't say no, but I would, you know, I definitely wouldn't tell my friends if I hooked up with you. You wouldn't tell your friends? First of all, friends? What friends? I think that would be the biggest claim to fame that this man ever had. I said, And I've literally told people, I'm like, the, the meanest thing you could ever say to me is saying something to the effect of like, if you and I were together yuck mm -mm. yuck call me a fat buffalo back bitch that's what i prefer i prefer that over you but don't put that image in my yeah mind. don't but don't ever tell people if this were my girlfriend well that's never. what i get i get now with these straight guys <laughs> is like they're so nervous to either like befriend me or even like interact with my content because they're nervous that like it will say something about them yes and like my hey, favorite weirdo. though is like i'll get a message from some straight man that makes a point to be like Hey Dylan, I'm a straight man. Thanks so <laughs> much for clarifying. Oh, thank God you told me. And then me. we'll be like, really enjoyed watching your girlhood series. Um, you know, take care, bud or pal or friend. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so you, um, I, you didn't have to put the pal or like let's let's like, not embarrass this bowl, Jerry. Yes, and I'm like, <laughs> I understand you don't want to kiss me, and yeah. you don't have to stress it at the end there. But see, um, don't they? You know what I mean? Because they, they're thinking about they it. Felt they, so, they were thinking yeah, about and it. And that's why I always think too, when I, it's the same thing when I, it's not obviously not the same thing, but it's in the same vein as like when I post um, thirst trap mm. pictures, like yep. glam pics and men will be like, this isn't even her. This is Photoshop. Okay. Right. Um, but I always say that made you mad that like, that made you so angry that you had to comment that because you saw those pictures of me and your pee pee wiggled mm. and that upset you. Ooh, and that's know, on you, babe. And I've been thinking about, too, with these, like, straight guys in my content. Mm -hmm. Like, there's that idea that if your boyfriend is transphobic or homophobic or yeah. any of those things, like, run because, yeah. like, they really do hate women. Like, they hate femininity. That's what they're so scared of. Yeah. And, like, this is, like, it could be a test. Like, show a few girlhood videos to your boyfriend and see how he reacts. Because Love. if he runs for the hills or has something bad to say, like that could say a lot about him. Oh, girl, I tell them to show my videos too. You should show both of our videos, honestly. That's the boyfriend show. test. Yes, yeah, show my videos, show Dylan's video if they're cool you will with learn both. You'll learn more than going on vacation with a man. <laughs> 
exactly. all right? That's You'll all learn. you need right there. And you First don't, date, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and you we'll don't just need link to, some videos. Honestly, just through the DMs. Send just them both the, our links and yeah, see what Tinder. they have to say. You don't even have to go to DMs. Yeah. You just you just do it on the Tinder don't app even right there. Don't even need up yet. That's no, a waste no, no, of time. No. I And I said that too because I, I say that like they don't have to love me. They don't have to think I'm the funniest person alive. But if they hate me, run. Mm-hmm. Immediately run. Same thing with Dylan. If they actively and viscerally hate me, yeah, they have a and problem. you know what's actually like a green flag is if they're like, oh, those are like some really lovely women, or I think the coolest straight guys, which I never even assume that they're trying to hook up with me, or like, oh yeah, you look great today, or like, yeah, you look pretty. Like they're so afraid to even compliment me because what what does that mean to compliment? That's a trans internalized girl? homophobia Woo! and transphobia. Don't I know it? Don't I know it? So you're like working on it in your own time. Yeah, <laughs> not with me. And now we're spreading joy. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta say, <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was thinking about like the whole joy thing like yeah. I have become more joyful as a woman mm. because which it, I feel like it could have gone the other way because yeah. you know I, I had these quote-unquote privileges of, of when I was a gay man yeah. and I very much think that like even gay men can be mean. Like I was like a little mean as a gay man, believe it or not. <laughs> and and now it's been, I think part of that, that meanness and that anger that we see from haters yeah. is really um, being afraid of femininity. And, and it's like an unhappiness. Yes, I was unhappy with myself. So mm -hmm. of course I had moments of like not being this person I am today online. And yeah. of course, like I, I wasn't, um, you know, ready to be this joyful person. Yeah. Um, but that is what feels really good is to like let that go and try to like step into girlhood because I feel like I hear from women a lot specifically on their girlhood that it was really negative or that mm. it's still negative and yeah. they're still working through all this trauma. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that I can start mine in a in a joyous place and try to make things as positive as possible. It's like a wonderful thing. thinking about like, I truly am starting to get stretch marks on my butt <laughs> and I like love them. I'm yeah. like, they're my new friends. And that's yeah. where I like, I do want to get us all to like a more positive place. Yeah, I world. agree. I mean, my approach is much different, but the <laughs> outcome is positive. Yeah. And that's like two negatives make a positive. Right? Amen, so I, I think for me, the positive always comes from the women and other people who message me and tell me how much my content has helped them or how much courage I've given them or how much strength I've given them just to like leave abusive relationships, yes. right? Get divorced. I've had, I had someone in Mexico tell me that they wore a bathing suit for the first time on the beach. Like they were really nervous about going to Mexico and wearing a bathing mm -hmm. suit. Like we ran into each other in Mexico. And she told me that she packed a bathing suit because she's been watching me for almost a year now. And she said she has so much confidence. And you actually in met herself. her, yeah, in, I met real her life. in real life. And she was oh, that crying was a when she told moment. me. Oh, yeah. So special. She was crying when she told me. And that made me almost cry because we were both drunk. So it's oh, important to yeah, mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were at one of those bottomless places. And you know what? The, the tequila was probably tainted with oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was real. Uh, I was really. <laughs> have, was I was living my best life. In open Mexico. bar stuff. Truly. And so, like. That kind of stuff is what I hold on and, to. And what I think is so cool about that is it's not even what you're saying in your videos. It's just the fact that you're standing up to men. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I tell what people I all think the time. With what I'm realizing too with like my girlhood series, it's like less of what I'm even, what the content is. And it's yeah. more of the fact that every day I'm showing up and exactly. I'm trying new things and exactly. I'm like trying to flip the script and show trans joy rather than yeah. trauma. Yeah. And that is like getting those messages of kids like coming out to me and yeah. me or parents being like, thank you so much. I just, you know, my mm -hmm. kid came out to me and now we're watching your videos together. Like that is why we're doing it. Exactly. I think that, and it's the fact that, like you said, we show up, yeah. right? We show up and we show out. And we have the courage to do it yeah. because, and it's still scary. Like I still, still scary, every day yeah. going to make a video, I'm still like, oh, like yeah. it, there's still it never really this goes away. Button. Yeah, the the fear and the the like <laughs> for anybody the, who wants to be an influencer out there, no, the fear never goes away. Yeah, truly, I I did a Q and A recently, and someone asked me, <laughs> what are some tips you want to give to someone who wants to be an influencer? And I told them, be absolutely certain this is what you want to do. Because it is not for everyone, I and I promise say you that. that to me, I'm like, please go learn the the piano, or <laughs> I'm like, just something. Get a skill. Like, yeah, I'm like, babe, like <laughs> some sort of land. Don't be a crafting. puppet like me. No, no, um, it's it's not for everyone, and I tell people that all the time, especially with what you and I do. 
Um, cause obviously we're not doing all the dances, which no. babe, I kind of wish that was the brand. Oh, the amount of times more... I'm like, I wish I was a beauty girl. <laughs> like mm. the amount of times I wish I was a fashion girl. I'm like, Oh, like, babe, oh man, I'm getting wrinkles over here. It just gets from heavy. All... It gets, it gets heavy. heavy. Mm -hmm. Speaking of my transness, I'm exhausted. No, truly. And having to prove that's why I said too, like the negativity is extra negative for the two of us, obviously in different ways, but it's extra, extra negative because it's people debating whether or not you're a good person, mm. whether or not you're a valid person, whether or not you're worthy. Your opinions. Yeah. That was, I think uh, the biggest part of this too, is being confident enough to share my opinions for the first time yeah. in, a, in a big way yeah. on a public you know, platform. Because again, like I'm such a people pleaser. I want to make everyone happy mm -hmm. so that when I do say something that might be like, you know, edgy in some capacity, it, it scares me. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's like, we got to take big swings. We're like two uh, opposite ends. I know. You're <laughs> I'm like, saying, you're like I'm just going to say coin. the damn thing. Yeah, we're the same coin, but I just like balls to the wall. Just do it. I let it all hang out and just do it. But that's like. It's the approach that we both have is necessary to what we're doing online, yep. like to our presence online. Uh, because I've said all the time, like terrible men don't respond to niceness. They don't respond to kindness. They don't respond to education. Mm -hmm. But they'll respond to these munchma jokes. I'll tell you that much. They're, they're, <laughs> they're listening. And they they that's hate it. those jokes. I'll tell you that. And that's the only, it's, like, yeah. I'm speaking your language. That's how I get you to stop. Yeah. Fire with right? fire, baby. And that's, and I've said that too. People are always like, fire with fire doesn't help anyone. And that's why I say, according you know, to you're who. you're like, it goes out, it turns to ash. That's why I said, according to who? Who's deciding whether or not it works? There I guess is no rule book. Depends on your goals, babe, because my goal is to get them to shut the up and it works <laughs> magically okay so we're gonna go into some of these comments on this video um so one of these says yes flip the script i love this concept and am adopting it no more energy spent on those who don't deserve it i feel that unless you're talking about my job but i feel that <laughs> if it makes you feel any better i don't want to expend the energy <laughs> yeah if you got the energy expend it yeah, but literally. if you don't if you're tired girly don't. That's what I'm saying. Silence is and a virtue. I, and I would argue, too, that me having a silly, goofy time with them is not me spending any energy at all. Meeting, me getting mad or getting upset is expending right. energy. If you're, if you're like, finding entertainment in it, yeah. that's hot. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This next one says, thank you. I was advised by a so-called friend to treat being backstabbed with kindness. She's toxic, and I avoid her with my silence. Okay, I feel so, that. Sounds like a healthy friendship to end. <laughs> yeah. Capricorn. Ooh. Oh, wait, you think? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, shit. She said, cut him off. <gasps> Dead to it her. Sounds like Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> cut him off. Look, and it's literally your handle that wrote that. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. You're like, mm, this, uh, this comment's familiar, from you, actually. <laughs> okay. The so. funny part is, I think I've, I preach so much positivity, and yet my, my time, like my For You page is all like just people like, I had, you know, he had my baby and then, you know, her sister screwed him and then the mom. Yeah, you know, I see like, those all the time. I love them. Uh, right? Who knows I if they're real it. or not? I eat it up. Okay, back to the nice stuff. <laughs> okay, so this next video um, says, it's basically a woman, she's uh, posing with text on the screen, but it says the term, don't fight hate with hate. <laughs> which is like are you in my comment section girl <laughs> um is basically subtle gaslighting because it invalidates real injustices that we suffer uh being angry doesn't mean you're being hateful it means you love yourself enough to get upset at your own mistreatment which put it on my tombstone bitch at this point my mind is like crickets right now i have no idea what you just said <laughs> but um it's basically when you get angry at yeah. people being hateful towards you that doesn't make you oh. a hateful person. It means that you love yourself enough to. Stand I up for wish yourself. I got angry and not like broke down into a <laughs> puddle of tears in my canopy well, bed. That's why you have me, babe. Now that's we're about to flip the script. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying, Dylan. Dylan is such a softy and such a kind soul. And honestly, this is why I gravitate towards people like you because I am such a menace when it comes to people being has, preyed on has this been your entire life like have yeah you, were you on the playground and were you like <laughs> somebody like you know took like a bully took lunch money and you were like hey give that back i've done that many times i can't even tell that's oh, not this a is joke. part of you this is like yeah, this, this isn't is, a new thing no and another thing too is my sister is older than me and but we're, we're two years apart in age but we're one year apart in school mm -hmm. so we were always in the same schooling 
and my sister is such a sweet kind person yeah. like she's so soft and like okay yeah like whatever you say like she's real like amenable in the sense that she just wants everyone to be happy have yeah. a good time right um so she would get whenever someone was even remotely mean to her mm -hmm. immediately i got upset you were, and you were the little si like you oh were the yeah little i was the mean little sister like, put so up, put them up yeah literally i remember my sister <laughs> she went through a period in school where she was coming home and she was hungry right and my mom was like why are you so hungry because we had free and reduced lunch or whatever at mm -hmm. school and my sister was like well my friend always tells me that she wants my lunch so i just let her have it and then oh. my sister's a like we're young we're super yeah. young okay kindergarten this like puts yourself in my shoes i'm like i don't even know four or five at this point i went into school early my mom said i couldn't wait to go to school which i think is the virgo in me but anyways i digress <laughs> so my sister my mom tells me the next day we get ready for school she's like i need you to find out who's taking your sister's lunch and i said yeah i'm say less bitch i'm on it so i go and i find out who's taking it and i tell her give it back like i literally walked up i said give that back to her immediately and we never saw her again no and she she tried to laugh and and like make fun of us and i remember this is one of the first <laughs> this is one of the first That's times super i ever ballsy as i a ever yeah this is one of the first times i ever compared anyone to anything mm -hmm. now that i'm thinking about it like actively <laughs> like to defend somebody else this is the the hero origin story yeah truly and then she told she said something mean about my sister and then i said I said, give it back, Stuart Little, because that's the first thing I could think of. And honestly, that still really, hits hard today. She was really short. Stuart Little had just come out. It was, oh, it was firing up fresh. the box office. And I was and she was tiny. And I and when I was that small, I was still really big. I was tall. I was, yeah. I was a big You're child towering over this first yeah. grader. <laughs> and she started crying and ran away. And then I got I got in trouble. But then my mom defended me. And Guaranteed she's like a follower of yours now, but has <laughs> never commented in the I fear so. that like you're going to see her name and you're, she's going to make a video. about. I that. still remember her name. I won't say hey, it. But she I got still a shout out this name, many bitch. years later. So that's I was just thinking of like she probably doesn't even remember that. But I do. And right. so does my sister. And I remember Dason was concerned I was going to be in trouble. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> right well and you do it so effortlessly like it just comes from you mm -hmm. and I was just sitting here like okay when I when I get mad at people or if I like have a problem with someone if I, I do get angry on the rare instance mm -hmm. it's like for good reason yeah. and also I like plan like I <laughs> I'm not kidding I had like a friend falling out situation mm -hmm. and I, I knew that she was gonna call me eventually and 12 months later she did call and I had a, I pulled up my notes app and I had everything I wanted to say to her. Do you have Virgo in your chart? I yes, Virgo Moon. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, but I the knew. Capricorn with getting the business yeah. stuff done. So mm -hmm. I had to have it all written down. Yeah. And I just I thought like uh, that's the way I work with if if I get because when I get angry or when yeah. I am uh, offended by someone, yeah. I tend to get really emotional and so yeah. I need to I know out of the moment what I want to say to them yeah. and so sometimes having it written down Helps can you. be really nice to access to be like okay now when I need to lay in with you like it's like yeah. when you practice in the shower you know <laughs> yeah, when you get your arguments really hard conversations yeah that's why um, I know you're I knew you had Virgo in you Virgos are receipt keepers mm, big time I love a receipt real me too real ridiculous receipt keepers so they like keep everything they remember everything um I feel like this is a running theory I have I feel like Virgos a lot of times have photographic memory so they remember almost to the fiber of like what was on your jackets like I how the confirm, situation happened where yeah it happened. that, that yeah. is I I do that sometimes yeah same. Because I I'm so particular about things same <laughs> that I think I love to analyze every detail same that's Virgo babe oh. and you're Virgo moon so that's your emotions okay so, that so we kind of have, like canceled out this like Capricorn negativity that you had earlier <laughs> yeah. saved you with the I felt threatened Virgo, yeah. on this show <laughs> Yeah, I, and literally on here when it says, like, when you respond, I've talked about this already, but, like, when you respond to disrespect in whatever way you see fit, I like, I'm not going to tone police how somebody decides to react to open disrespect. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're forgetting because sometimes dudes will be like, you're an adult. You be one too then, right? You started it, but you can't finish it, and that's right. the problem. Well, I have literally never... St like I've never intentionally ever started anything online same, before same. and that's what's cr like people are out here multiple times a day starting things I and they just like when they see my videos and they get upset 
they just close their eyes the first half of the video, <laughs> like the first 15 seconds when I include like, what they said, and then they only open them when I'm comes. talking. Yep. And they're like, that was just so mean. That was so mean of you. And, I'm, and I and I always say, so I made a video mean. about this yesterday, and I literally said on there, what gives you the right, like what makes you think it's up to you, how I react to disrespect, mm. to misogyny, to bigotry of right. any kind. Why is that up to you? And then I was like, unpack it. You're right Let's there. Let's work through some trauma. Why do you think that that's up to you? Why it's supremacy? Because all of these people <laughs> should be in therapy and they're not. Yeah, amen. Amen to that. And then some of the comments on these videos, like it says, I kind of needed to hear this. I always feel guilty for being angry or mean to bigoted people because I was told to be nice to everyone no matter what. And that's misogyny, babe. It's pushing you down. It, it constantly makes women feel like they need to be the bigger person. They need to be kind and respectful and patient. Right. And Every coming time. back to the video, like this being such a, a positive video on TikTok, those are the ones I'm like kind of embarrassed to enjoy. Or like, yeah. like those are the ones that I'm like saving on, you know, like my Instagram, like yeah, save folder. Yourself. Like, yeah. or it's like, the you know, the poetry that's like really impactful. Yeah. Where like, I, I'm sometimes even nervous to like like it because it's like, you're like. They'll see it. People are going to see it. And, and also like there's something about self-help that still sometimes is like a little like there's a stigma of like yeah. oh this is preachy or like this feels like mlm like if it you know makes what you feel good yeah like when you see it, it's like life advice or any kind of help yeah but we need more of that on tiktok i agree and i think it's i think it's free game if you're going to be awful to somebody mm -hmm. it's free game at that point Right. You just give me the green light. That's why I said, like, as soon as you tell me it's ready, mm -hmm. let's go, then let's go. So that's why I'm Square like, up. how come only you're allowed to joke? Right. I don't get to join in on the silly, goofy time. They and I just cut wonder, like, as we get older, how will this, like, will it get quieter from their side? Yeah. Or will it just continue? I feel like the only reason it does continue is because new people join. Just like how you're saying, a new fresh batch of people mm -hmm. find you and then it's like... Or they're teaching their kids something that then yeah. their kids grow up to say those same things. Hey, yeah, hate is, is taught. For it's sure, not, maybe. It's not ingrained in us. But you know what is ingrained in us? Patriarchy, racism, homophobia, transphobia. But it's up to us to unlearn it, right? We take the necessary steps. Yeah. You and I are both adults. We're halfway to 30 yeah right so we're well into our 20s so it's on us to unpack and understand why we can't mm -hmm. laugh at certain things say certain right. things why it's important to like and, know the difference and getting resources like that aren't on the internet or on tiktok because i feel like exactly. so much of like even like people are getting diagnosed with things from an app mm -hmm. and that's like super dangerous and so i think learning how to unpack all this trauma yeah. shouldn't just happen online i agree i think that's a huge reason why i'm such a proponent of secondary education so college mm -hmm. of any kind whatever it may be whether it's like a trade school or maybe you go backpacking in europe or whatever yeah like i think especially in college because that's what i can speak to you meet people from all different walks of life and you learn a lot more about yourself and you learn more about your impact and the intention you should have going out into the world, how to be a better person. Oh my God, you're the president of the United <laughs> States right now. It's true though, that's how you learn. You you in interact and engage and befriend and maybe even fall in love with people that you never thought you would right. in a, a oh, million years. And I do feel like a lot of the people that you have to end up stitching are these like millennial men or yeah. even older. Yeah. And hopefully it's the, like with Gen Z, I'm like, baby, Babies, please. Yeah, yeah, you know, please. don't do this to us. Yeah. Um, but it'll just, yeah. I'm really, I'm, I am hopeful for the future. Me too. And, that, and like, I think that's, a, I think it's a wonderful thing that yeah. that they have people like us too. So, what would your advice be for someone like me, who's a creator online that's like yeah. super submissive, mm -hmm. and like, what would you? recommend me do for like when the hate comes or like how do you how have you always found this confidence in yourself i would say for people like yourself who are more on the demure side so you kind of like take it and then you you're upset about it internally but you don't want to rock the boat yeah. yeah you just it's not that you don't know how you just aren't used to doing it and that's mm -hmm. what i tell people all the time because i always tell them to work up to it right so start small so if you're someone like yourself, I know if they get your order wrong, you don't correct them. If they call you the wrong name, you don't correct them. Like you just kind of let it slide because you're like, well, it's not that serious. And it isn't, but it is to an extent because okay. it speaks to a larger issue, which is you feel like you're not important enough to be respected, even in the smallest of ways. Right. Whether it's your name correct, whether it's your, your pronouns, pronouns. right? Whether it's 
um, your just gender identity in, in general. Or, yeah, and I think because... Or your Starbucks order. Right, right. and sometimes... I think because I, I want to listen to everyone and really value what everyone has to say mm -hmm. that when it is bad about me or when someone is like being transphobic towards me, I'm like, well, I guess they have a right to like say those things because, you yeah. know, it's, you know, that's the thing is you have the right to say things. Uh, your f right to freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence. Mm. So everything has, <gasps> you know, like, I mean? have you, this is crazy, but like, have you ever had people like lose their jobs because of like what you were doing or like get, um, I honestly don't know. I don't think so. so. I know that some dudes have like, some dudes make shit up, but some of them are like, well, people were calling my work and I'm like, well, why did you post this? Babe, like you brought this upon yourself. Yeah. But I had one moment where towards the beginning of my days of girlhood series, on Instagram, I was getting a lot of like death threats mm. and usually from men and it yeah. got to like, I don't usually post people, we were like post people's names, yeah. but I did. I just like posted this, this comment it was so horrible about yeah. like somebody's wanting to like kill me in my sleep or something. Yeah. And these people, this would, man, I looked up this little town in Australia, like in the, in something the bush, about the in men, the Australian bush. The men in Australia. Ooh, What's going on over there? Misogyny Get is it happening right. in Australia. Fix it before I come over there and I What's fix it. What's going on? I know, before we go <laughs> pet some koalas. No, truly. But, um, we got to go together. That would yeah. be really fun. <laughs> um, but these people managed to like get this man fired from his job in Australia and I had this intense guilt and and I don't even know what the job was but like I, I just couldn't believe that like me reposting something had that effect and it really was like it, at first I was filled with regret because I was like oh my god this poor man lost a job and then I was like Oh my God, Dylan, he was threatening to kill you. Yeah. And although like, babe, that's a, that's a hard flight to, you know, yeah. that's a, that's a I pretty mean, penny to. I'll see you in to, two weeks. Yeah. Thank you. It's going to, yeah. we'll get a body guard by then. No, truly. But I did think I was like, oh, that's, that happened. Like that was the universe's plan. Like yeah. in that, you know, I, I don't need, need to lose sleep over that at no, night. No, not at all. Um, and, and that's why I said. it was a learning lesson for everyone. Yeah. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom of consequence. And that's what I've said countless times. Like. And you have to think too, whenever we post these things, mm -hmm. we don't tell people like, go harass them, go get them fired, go, no, this is where do. they live, this is oh, where they work. Ready. I, I make fun of you as a person and that's it. Anything that happens after that, I have no control over. But I'll tell you this, am I supposed to weep because you called me a fat buffalo bitch and then I posted your thing online and then you got a razz and then maybe got in trouble from your school? I'm supposed to feel bad for you? No, I don't. <laughs> I immediately <laughs> don't. And I think, too, to speak to uh, the other point about how the younger generation is learning a lot more, especially when they have creators like you and I, there's also a, a certain amount of privilege in being raised in this generation now as Gen Z, because you and I, in our generation, we did not have access to the education that they have now. So that being said, there are some times where there are things you used to laugh at. There are mm -hmm. things you used to say. There are things you used to do that are no longer funny. And only millennials and older can relate to that. Right. Because sometimes Gen Z people hold you to such a stark standard, especially you and I, because we have very specific platforms. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, oh, well, how could you ever laugh at that? How could you ever joke about that when you were 15, 16 years old? I didn't have the access. Oh, my God. We did. had horrible role models. Oh, the way and the things I mean, we babes, used to Like for trans, trans people, like on TV, it was just like law and order victims, you know? Yeah, like, or like, they were like, making fun of them on like things like Friends, right? Like yes, they have a bunch of jokes like, about... About it, trans people too. And partly why I took so long to even, because I was non-binary for like a year, mm -hmm. and then why I was so scared to take on that trans woman title, because I didn't even know the steps of what, like yeah. how to do this. So that's why I was like, oh, I'll start at day one. And <laughs> now I'm like, oh babe, that was a uh, <laughs> taxing experience. They We're in the really, thick of it. I'm um, sure. Don't know if I would recommend to other trans people to do what I'm doing. Oh my God. But just to protect yourselves, because yeah. I think that this is such a um, personal, personal journey. journey. Yeah. Um, but I am just so excited to like have this new generation have access to people like us. Same. And, and that's why I want there to be more people like us. Same. And, I agree. And with w what content's being made, especially for like millennials creating content. I think we're so afraid of like being cringe yeah. that, you know, people don't, they just choose not to make anything at all. Yeah. And yes, a As lot of like millennial on, on humor TikTok. is like very cringe. 
But sometimes like being real and authentic and like putting yourself out there yeah. can really pay off. And I agree. It, it, you don't know how many people you're actually helping. I think um, that all the time too. When people ask me, I'm, I'm, I want to make content, but I'm afraid of like the backlash of hate, whatever it may be. Yeah. I always tell them, you got to make the content for you. That's oh, the most important part. Well, and a lot of you. these videos that I make are like little diary entries that mm -hmm. mostly what I'm excited about is to look back, you know, so yeah. many years from now or have my kids be able to watch these yeah. videos and be yeah. like, oh, wow, look at our mom and yeah. date, da, da, da. And, and that's <laughs> where joy comes from. It's yeah. like, I think that even TikTok in, in what can be such a hateful place yeah. is making it for you. And yeah. once it's out there, having it be, um, cause it can be a free for all. Oh, absolutely. Babe, we know it's a circus out there. Yeah. Um, I think having it be for you and yeah. be something that started with joy so yeah. that you can hopefully keep hold on to that for as long as possible. I agree. I think that's, it's a universal feeling for all creators who grow, um, not just like on TikTok, but like they explode like you and I did. Like I was a pretty steady growth for a while and then it just like exploded into another yeah. universe and that's how yours was too. So we never asked to do this. We never thought we were gonna do this, but now that we are, I like know, and I'm sure you feel the same way that this is like my true purpose in life. Like this is what I was always meant to I do. I was so scared of like what the term influencer meant. Like that <laughs> made me, like that was cringy word for me. Or, yeah, like, it is. Word. It's a cringe word. We know, okay. Oh, we're well aware, but we know. <laughs> now like there is like true power in that it, there is and i think it's a wonderful thing i and i you know what i always say too like i'm so grateful to the younger generation <laughs> look at us in our these like like cosmo and wanda outfits. i know look at us they we're ain't like, slick this is to the younger jet like we're addressing <laughs> the nation i'm so i'm grateful to them because they've taught me a lot oh my um, god i'm their and biggest I, fans yeah they've taught me a lot they inspire me like and they and Do they you make consider me hopeful. yourself gen z or millennial we're millennial. Okay. Especially me. I'm older than you. So yeah. I, that's the weirdest part is like, thank, thank you for claiming us as your own. Yes. Um, and well, we are old, yeah, old older. grandpas. We I'm are. an old grandpa. I'm, and I'm a grandmother. There you go. <laughs> your grandpa, and your grandma. That's <laughs> the two of us. I'm like, uh, that's why sometimes they say like, like that. Oh my God, girl, like that Nick Jonas TikTok I was telling you about oh. the millennial humor one. Okay, that's the bad, the cringe of millennial humor. All love, all peace, but that video was hard to watch. And I feel like you and I are, are more of a pure form of millennial. Yes. And then below us, obviously, is Gen Z. So I think that, I think we're okay, okay? We're all right. But sometimes when you tell people you're a millennial. Yeah, or they say cool beans and, you know, things <laughs> like that. Like, makes me real nervous cool to beans, be around. Rawr. Um so yeah, maybe take a few notes before yeah. the content creation from the Gen Zers. Yeah, I, that's what I'm doing. That's why. I, that's how I feel. Oh my gosh, I never feel any more millennial than when I do transition videos. Oh, oh, girl, the amount of times I film them, I'm like, oh, this is so embarrassing. If anyone watched me do this, I would die. Babe, I have no idea. That's why I just talk to the camera and I, <laughs> I slap on some caps. That's why so many of mine are talking to the camera. And then with the few times I do do transitions. I will say like, but it's funny for us too, like coming from a world where we were normal people and then mm. now being in all these like glam spaces. Yeah. And like, it's it pretty is really, surreal. Yeah. It's so fun to be able to be like, oh, I'm going to make a transition video because I got my hair and makeup professionally done. Same. And that's exciting. Same. Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, just let me be a, an oldie. Okay. <laughs> let me be your Facebook mom. I don't want to talk about it. Who are some of your favorite like positive people on TikTok? Um, Mama Tot's a great one. Oh, Ophelia. Mama Tot, we love you. She's a great one. I uh, adore and she's her. She's in the com she's in the comments. Like, I mean, oh yeah, she be in there. those comments. She's professional, and yeah. um, I got so excited. Michaela too, makeup by Michaela. Oh, uh, I love Michaela. So much fun, and I think that was like you and her were my favorite like <laughs> like mutuals like to Sweet. have follow me back. I love um because it really does. I think the more people like that on yeah. there, just sharing their stories and being vulnerable and, and those, you know, Mama Tot's going through a lot right now. And yet she is so strong and yeah. so confident. And, and she's still showing up. She's still showing up. For everyone, for her audience. And still managing to find joy. Yeah. And I've even seen recently, like people are trying to take her down when she has been able to find joy in this really tough time for her. And I think how evil is rotten. that? Yeah, people are just How rotten. evil is that? If you are trying to strip someone of their joy. Of what little joy they have in this like storm they're you're going a monster. through. Yeah, yeah, truly, you're a bad person. I, I, I adore her. I've loved her for so long. So like, 
I followed her forever. Same with Michaela. I she is so funny. I adore I her. I trust her with my life. Any with makeup. Time, like I'm like, I well, I gotta go buy any it. Any makeup video she makes i'm watching every second of that shit can i do it no i'm so but i'm invested <laughs> same every every second i'm watching i'm like uh-huh like it's gonna change my makeup routine right but i'm just watch. i'm so invested I she know. has me hooked yeah <laughs> and and i think um you know this women is what it all has in common i feel like you know we very rarely see like male influencers trying to make a, a very positive impact i feel yeah. like it's so much clout chasing it's so much you know trends and yeah. all you know just trying to stay relevant or stoking the drama i love yeah. how men love to pretend how much they hate drama when they're the ones that start it <laughs> men are the most dramatic people they the are planet. they really are Bitch, get a theater degree that's why i said they're like you don't think men are they're like women are so dramatic i'm like just take a scroll through my comment section just for a day just go ahead and look through there and see what men are really yeah, ever like. Ever watched a man step his toe? Oh it's my the god! End of the world. When they get a cold, um, <laughs> the end of the world, bitch. But that it does. There is something about femininity and joy, and yeah. those being in tandem. And I think the moment men separate the like gender identity of being a woman with the ident the the idea of femininity, yeah, the qualities of femininity, yeah. and knowing that they can tap into it and yeah. access it, yeah. Babe, this world yeah. is gonna be rocked. Yeah, dude. <laughs> because even like like straight feminine men, yeah, some of the hottest men in the entire world. I no, mean, literally. the Harry Styles of it all. With the I, I saw, and you know what? I saw a trend going around, and I only saw it because, unfortunately for me, I'm tagged in the worst things <laughs> ever on TikTok, and it was literally like big gym bro type dudes saying things like. If you ever feel bad about yourself, just remember this is her crush. And they're like putting that picture of Harry Styles when he dressed up as Dorothy for his Halloween The hottest thing I've show. ever seen. But then I think to myself, I'm like, that's what shakes you? A man in a dress? Like, honestly, give up. Like, if that's the scariest thing you've right. ever seen, right. life is way too hard. Amen. Give up. Turn it and in. And a lot of those men are on Grindr right now. <laughs> and they're looking for... And you know what I think, too? I, I just think, like, I personally, I'm too busy. Mm -mm. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the emotional capacity to get that upset over shit that doesn't affect me. Literally at all. It doesn't hurt right. me. It doesn't touch me. I like, I have no capacity for it. Well, and I, I think, don't have room. And I think that even this, the things that we're witnessing online with like, negativity, like that applies to our real life relationships. Too. Yeah. Like, I know that like, I haven't dated anyone in years. Can't wait. Um, yeah. who's out there and I think with the negativity that we're like seeing online yeah. it directly applies to our lives as well because like I know that when I go into enter into a relationship which I haven't dated anyone in years <laughs> if anybody's out there hello Dylan single woohoo <laughs> um, my boobs are getting big it's awesome love that but um, <laughs> I, I just think that I will if they're triggered by my feminine joy or yeah. if they're you know, pushing back with pes pessimism, I know that that's, that's their own trauma. Yeah. I know that's not me. And I also know right away that they're not getting a second date. Absolutely. And that's another thing. Uh, it speaks to misogyny as a whole, mm -hmm. right? And that's another reason why things that are universally loved by women are typically shit on in all capacities like anything that's loved by women anything that's cherished by them whether yeah, it's boy it bands second rate singers yeah they're like oh that's so lame that's so corny and it's literally only because it's I loved by women i have a question women. for you sure um with your current relationship mm -hmm. so cute and i love everything you post thank you do you see how great like men can be like mm -hmm. is is he living an example of like because you don't have to have those conversations with him <laughs> because you're like having them online and like, yeah. does it make you value your relationship even more? Yes, uh, it definitely does. It's mostly because my boyfriend um, and I are like on the same page morally. That's why when people say like, what's like the first red flags you look for? It's so morals. Babe. A man can have the same morals as a yeah, woman. Yeah, it's very Woo! possible, babe. Shocker. It's, and you know what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny too is like I got. I, um, somebody, another creator actually asked me this question and they asked me if I had to teach him anything mm. as far as like being open, being receptive, like learning, growing, all that kind of stuff. And I said, no, I did not have to, believe it or not, I didn't have to teach him to respect other people who may live in a different 
life than they than he does like i believe it or not i didn't have he to did the work his, on his own yeah on his own accord on his and he own had, had free like, will parents that were willing to teach him that yeah and, and he and he taught a lot to his own family and he's taught yes. me a lot like i literally have you ever heard of the classroom example no okay Tell so us. in sociology I, I i don't know if it's all around but he was a sociology major in college so Flex. there's like a classroom <laughs> example when it comes to the idea of oppression mm -hmm. so at the very front of the classroom is cis straight white men so they can't see any oppression because it's all behind them we're all facing the same way right right, right behind them are cis straight women white women right right behind them are just gay white women right behind them and so on and so forth at the very back of the classroom is black trans women right and so you can only see what's in front of you when you're born into this world you can only see the oppression that's in front of you that's why a lot of times they talk about the they criticize white feminism because it doesn't include anyone else it's right. not intersectional in its very nature it doesn't include trans women it doesn't include disabled women it doesn't include black women pe women of color right so <sighs> it as the classroom goes further back the people at the very back of the classroom can see all of the oppression in front of them so right. it's very obvious to them so or when you have to make an effort to like walk yourself to the back of the yeah, classroom. Yeah, so you have to make an effort to turn around yeah. and look behind you and see who's behind you and who you can help. He taught me that. Wow. So I told my I told my friend that and she was all, "Damn, bitch, must be nice." Was yeah. <laughs> like, so like, and also like I think the work that you're doing yeah. online like I think it would be even harder to do if you didn't have that example in your life of like yeah. a partner that you know, like imagine if you were doing this as a single girl being like, wow, these are all like, cause mm -hmm. as a single girl, I'm like, wow, I really got a <laughs> lot of men to look forward to in this life. And it's, you know, what's, you know, what's even, <laughs> even more ironic and also kind of terrible is that me having a relationship with a cis hetero man, mm -hmm. um, who's the idea of masculinity yeah. right, to these terrible men gives me more credibility to them that's the irony is like it's the same concept like when we go out if i get hit on and you he's did a with field me. study yeah if i get hit on and he's with me or they see him after the fact they apologize to him they don't apologize well there's some virgo in you right there because you got you've got the receipts oh of yeah like babe. this amazing I'm keeping man them constantly. what's his name billy thank you billy <laughs> I can't wait to meet you. And um, I know I, I talk to him all the time about you. Really? Yeah, oh I, I was just telling him last night how much I fucking love I'm you. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so you could come over while well, girls oh, are in my yeah, house. Yeah. I got lots of wine. So oh, my, I'm a red. I'm a red girl. Are you a red girl? Yeah. Oh, I'm a white girl. Oh, love. Now that, look at us. Now that's the different sides of the coin. <laughs> so, spreading love. Spreading love. And we're red and white wine. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's all for today. I do want to say, though, I want to ask Dylan, like, what would you say is something that you want people to take away from, whether it's your platform or just the idea of what it means to spread love on the internet or just in general in life? What would you want people to take away? That it is so much, it is actually easier to spread joy than it is to, to spread hate. And mm -hmm. I know it can be sometimes when we get anxiety and depression built up, I think that it, it then can become such an effort to spread joy. But once yeah. you break through those things, yeah. um, it can, it can reignite you. And, yeah. and I think that I know it's so silly to say, but like, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. Like sometimes <laughs> it's like it, it really, we don't have to be horrible to each other. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I just hope that we can like, if, even if you have opinions about me or Drew that you don't mm -hmm. necessarily like love or, um, you know, we, we aren't your cup of tea. Yeah. Babe, talk about it at brunch with yeah. your girlies. Like, <laughs> like don't roast tell me. us in, in the DMs. Yeah, I just, I don't need to see it. Yeah, I, I don't, don't need to know. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's your business. That's, that's mm -hmm. your opinion. Yeah. Um, because we have feelings and we're real humans yeah. that didn't expect this to happen for yeah. us. And we um, didn't choose us. Right. And if, you know what and I mean? If, we're going to continue with this. Like mm -hmm. I can't deal with all the hate. Yeah. So. And it's, and it's, if you think about it, it's not natural. No, like nobody, nobody who works a regular nine to five job, whether it's retail food service or like corporate, nobody has to deal with people watching them through a one way mirror and saying all the most horrible shit so you can hear them, but you can't see right. them. Nobody has to deal with that. Right. We're the only people who have to deal with that. Ooh. So it's like, it's, it's a, beautiful thing and mm -hmm. the good far outweighs the bad yeah but the bad is very bad mm -hmm. and that's why we talk about like we spread joy and love in very different ways but for me it's something where my joy comes from 
women and others getting strength from me and drawing from me and yeah. using me as like almost like a talisman when they want to stand up for themselves mm -hmm. and that's that's joyous that kindles so much joy for me Marie Kondo bitch oh I and, am so excited and I think the other part of it is like we spend so much time online our jobs are online yeah finding the joy outside of it because yes, even if absolutely. you're going to TikTok to find your joy or your hate mm -hmm. um that's a problem yeah because it, it has to happen elsewhere yeah. and then whatever content comes across your for you page like so be it yeah but it's it's the outside that matters like absolutely. go pet some animals oh you know? my god animals change the game a when i got my dog do you good oh when i got my dog it changed the game for me i gotta get some, some animals something about an animal in the house like another living thing who like has no brain cells outside of you Crickets like my dog is so like <laughs> my dog knows nothing except food and ping on my beanbag chair that's all he knows that's all he cares yeah, about but that dog doesn't have hate in his heart <laughs> not at all and i wish sometimes i'm like you want to switch lives with me like, let's bit. switch places you yeah and I. that sounds really maybe what i would give to be my dog squid for a day oh, oh my god anyways i will say this though if you're someone who thinks that i'm a hateful person whatever i'd i challenge you right to let go of the patriarchy let go of misogyny this goes for women and men and everyone in between it releases you when you release that and that's need. what hey this is what i want for you yeah i want you to stop late like i never want you to think of what you're doing as hateful or Thanks, negative Beb. and when when we speak on it i don't want you to put yourself in that category because yeah. at the end of the day we're actually in the same category love and and so we need to be watching out for each other yeah and in and when you're consuming content really see what content creators are actually doing behind their words and yeah. what the you know you making people confident enough to wear bikinis or me making people yeah. confident to come out like that's the essence of what we're doing yeah absolutely and you know what i would say we're doing a pretty damn good job bitch <laughs> cheers <laughs> it looks like it's paying off so thank you all for joining us for this episode of the comment section today thank you so much to my guest the beautiful wonderful dylan thank where can you. everybody find you babe you know instagram <laughs> TikTok. uh we got a, a book in the works baby love so it's gonna be wild but i love ya and what are your handles oh at dylan mulvaney we love it thank you so much for joining oh, us you today say love, will you say love ya with me Eddie? oh yeah. yeah one two three love, love ya, ya. <laughs> <laughs> i always want to do that with you oh my god i love that thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the comment section if you enjoyed it, please make sure you subscribe to the Pass Your Bedtime YouTube channel. New episodes drop every Wednesday, and you can also stream it on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, wherever, bitch, you know where to find me. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye.